Welcome to Teens on Topic. I'm your host, Emma Arnson, and today we're talking about animal testing. But first, let's hear from some people around Davis. Uh, do you think that testing on animals is, should be allowed? Um, I guess from a scientific standpoint, you know, there's some valid, like, validity to that. Um, sometimes I feel like, you know, it might not be ethical to try to humans. Uh, but um, sometimes, uh, like, lab rats are, you know, they are bred for that reason. Uh, so, I mean, I, I sort of do, you know, uh, sort of agree with it. Like, it can be acceptable at some points, I think. Uh, yes, I do. Um, depends on uh, what sort of testing they're doing. If it's for things like uh, the betterment of human health, things like that, without necessarily the, like, the detriment to the animal, um, then I, I kind of, I'm, I'm for it. Sure. Yeah. No, I don't think that animal testing should be legal. I think that it's very harmful for not only the animals, but the people involved. Uh, I feel like maybe on small animals like mice, but nothing bigger than that. Yeah, I kind of agree. I don't really care what the animal is. Uh, basically, if we're going to solve for diseases and a lot of the problems that humanity is facing, we obviously have to test that out and experiment with that. And uh, doing it on humans is probably not a great idea, so animals are the next best option. Um, I think animal testing should absolutely be legal. Um, to expand on that, you know, animals, we have dominion over animals, you know. It was said in the good book that uh, sweet baby Jesus <laughs> said that we should be able to test animals and make them suffer if we like. Um, no, not at all. I think there are better ways to determine if a product's safe, especially if they have the test from previous animal testing. They can just recycle that without testing on more animals. So it's like completely doesn't make sense. Yeah, basically what she said. I mean, she wrapped it up pretty well. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know everything about what goes into animal testing, but I think there are a lot of, animals. you know, health problems or like, you know, different dangers for the animal specifically, and I don't think that's really necessary. Yeah. Thank you guys. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that was some interesting things that people had to say, most of them had to say that they agreed with animal testing, uh, but what did you guys think about their opinions? I just learned that the that sweet baby Jesus allowed <laughs> for animal testing and for animals to suffer. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. remember reading about that one. Uh, learning new things all the time. Um, <laughs> um, one of the things that I thought was interesting is how like people talked about animals, like testing on animals to help prevent diseases, but one thing that I feel like people didn't touch on was like, how um, harmful it is when they test on animals for like makeup companies and like hair products and stuff. And so like I feel like I try to steer away from companies that are known for like harming animals with animal testing just because I feel like if you're buying your makeup from or like hair products from someone that's more like ethical, you're getting a better product. That's kind of how I feel about that. I think one of the people there brought up a good point. There's a different there's a wide variety of ways you can test animals, cosmetic medical and you know food applications um, and it just really depends on if you're hurting the animal if you should do so. I believe that if you are hurting the animal you probably shouldn't but if you're simply uh, I don't know rinsing the animal with a product that is designed for humans and won't hurt the animal well, then I feel that it should be okay and should be allowed. Well I think an important part of animal testing is that like, um, it's hard to tell whether you are hurting the animal until you do it which is kind of why they do testing. Um, I want to go back to the theological uh, implications of this. I think it's, it is interesting, the idea that um, mankind is, I mean, they, he said, he used the word dominion, that we have dominion over animals, um, <laughs> and the idea that we're allowed to um, make them suffer. I think it's interesting when you think about um, how far is too far. You know, I, I, I don't know, um, but it's... Uh, it's really tough, and who should be making these pronouncements about what's too far in animal testing? Well, I mean, I feel like about how far is too far, you kind of have to look at the individual case of something. Like, I mean, I don't know really anything about how the process of cosmetics being made and tested works. I feel like that's probably not something where you really need to cause a lot of pain to create them well. So I feel like you should, you know, try to, you know, based on what kind of test you're doing, see, okay, is it really necessary to cause pain? Is there some way we can be more careful about this? But I know, I mean, I, mean, I feel like in terms of experimenting with medical treatments that could potentially go wrong 
and harm animals, you know, if that's going to, in the future, help us to prevent the deaths of a lot of humans or the sickness of a lot of humans, the pain of a lot of humans, I think it's okay that we test that out on animals. And I, I mean, I feel like the, the worst pain is the pain that kind of comes with being able to process things more, um, you know, that kind of comes with self-awareness. So I feel like testing things on animals that, that aren't self-aware, the pain that they feel, I don't feel like at, just on a, just instinctually, I don't feel like is as bad as the pain that, that self-aware animals can feel. So I think maybe yeah. we should ban testing on like octopi and dolphins. Um, yeah. For sure, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, and and as far as like medical treatments and stuff go, like obviously if it's gonna save lives, like that is a whole other different story. Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard to determine um, like how to like or like what of what, what part of that testing is helpful and what part of it is harmful um, and or unnecessary. Um, but I, I definitely agree that that when it comes to medical stuff, it's a whole other story than just cosmetics. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you all think of when? laboratories breed animals with specific diseases so that they can find a cure. Do you think that's also? Uh, yeah, the point that the guy was bringing up about lab rats, I feel like doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, they're still animals. I, I feel like um, on some level that that is even worse. I mean, raising them to have diseases, at least um, when, you, when you don't look at the like external consequences of that, that seems pretty immoral. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really feel like there are any problems um, in and of themselves with like genetic modification of animals. Um, maybe things where there's not really an end goal. Like people, uh, like scientists have genetically altered some bunnies, I believe, to make it so they glow in the dark. They're obviously not going to try to make glow in the dark humans. So I feel yeah. like if you can, if you can kind of have some expected consequential like impact you know some expected thing that is going to help humanity then it's justified but i don't think if you are really i think if you're just doing it for the idea of pure science then you shouldn't cause suffering yeah so. i definitely agree with that yeah i'm just going to take the opposite view of um adam i think um i think that it's totally fine to have lab rats i wouldn't want to ever work in that kind of environment i wouldn't be on, want to be around that that's kind of creepy to me mm -hmm. um but i th think it's totally fine to have animals um that have little to no significance be there for the betterment of science. Uh, but what does scare me is the gen genetic influx. Um, you see all kinds of scientists around the world coming up with chimeric animals where there are uh, human um, genes and brain cells put into these animals. And um, I think it has very, very scary implications for our slowly, uh, for our rapidly changing genetic um, engineering landscape. Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> I think another variable we should take into consideration is that no matter how closely related we may be to a certain animal, you know, because we're all in the mam, we're, we're mammals or whatever, or um, it, it's not a human. In the end, you also got to think that these animals, you know, they cannot 100% predict what the outcome will be on a human. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Do you guys think we'll have animal testing forever, or do you think this is something like an intermer intermediate step before we come up with something better? I think that we're gonna have animal testing for a really long time. If yeah. like, I mean, obviously, like the idea that it would be indefinite is kind of hard to predict. But I think that um, as of right now, it's it's kind of um, just the way to to test things without testing them on humans, um, especially like lab rats and bunnies and stuff like that. Um, so. Yeah. yeah, I think it's it's not going to go away anytime soon. It's just about like regulations and stuff. I feel like before any experience, it, it is really, really difficult to predict the consequences of some kind of new medication. I mean, to avoid having animal testing, um, I feel like right what you'd have to do would basically be like you create some pill in a lab and say, okay, we know 100% that this is like going to cure X disease in humans and have no side effects. I don't think that's really possible to do before yeah. uh, looking at the impact on some animal. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think it's going to it's it's going to be here for the long haul. Um, I do think, as we mentioned before, it's going to change significantly towards um, genetically modified animals. Um, towards these, you know, it's it's not just going to be um, lame bunnies. It's going to be a lot um, a lot of different stuff. 
um, it's kind of scary, but I think it's also um, it's also going to be. I mean, science is always moving us forward and helping us in a lot of ways. So I think, despite the possible dystopian aspects that we kind of worry about, I think there will be a lot of good for the human race out of this. What were the bad aspects that you were bringing up? Uh, well, just um, genetic modifying and chimeric animals, um, and then mm -hmm. just the abuse of animals when you look at uh, testing nowadays. Uh huh. So, so what do you think is like the bad? Where is the bad in in like splicing animal DNA? I think when you're mixing human DNA into animals, I think that's incredibly scary. Uh huh. Just okay. as a reader of comic books. Sure. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. It's also another thing. What if a human volunteers to be tested on? What would the case be then? Would you guys know? I I I don't know. I mean, nowadays what? we do have clinical trials, right? We do. Yeah. Okay. Hundred percent. Yeah. Why don't we just stick to that in that case? I'm not questioning well, you. I'm just. Yeah. I, think, I mean, right. I think it's just like starting on a smaller scale, like with lab rats or something like that. Like that is, um, like they start there so then they can move on mm -hmm. to clinical trials right. and stuff like that. So just to ensure that there is going to be less harm done to people by the time that they're coming around to clinical trials because a lot of the times like if they're making a medicine like they wouldn't know yeah. what exactly yeah. the side effects were going to be. Um, so they don't just want to kill a whole group of people who yeah. signed up for a trial. Right. Yeah. And I, I feel like sometimes it's not entirely your choice either. I mean if you are told that you are going to get like ten thousand dollars to participate in some clinical trial that has some small chance that it will kill you, you know, should we allow should we allow people to participate in that? You know, people. I mean, there are probably going to be a lot of people who are really poor who are going to take that chance, and I feel like that will result probably in a lot of kind of horrifying genetic modification of people because of their economic status. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily think a lot of it is because of money. I think a lot of it is when people start running out of. Um, Established methods, so I think a lot of people, when chemotherapy doesn't work in cancer, that's when people start moving on to um, experimental methods. So I do mm -hmm. think it'll be a lot more people out of medical desperation than uh, economic situations. Um, that being said, uh, I still think that um, it has the potential for good and bad. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Does anyone have any last sh thoughts they'd like to share? No. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining me and us here at the studio. It's been a great time, as always. Tune in next time when we have a, a very interesting topic that is, is, pertains to a lot of teens in America. <laughs> <laughs>